RV owners are often confused about solar power. There are a lot of numbers and many terms out there, but really you don't need to know any of that to understand solar. Hello everyone, I'm Brad from 13 Adventures. Today, I'm going to explain to you in a very simple manner how your solar system works. And I'm going to address seven common questions people ask about RV and solar. Before we get started, I want to make one thing clear. Solar is easy. Please never let anyone try to confuse you or tell you anything other than that. By far, the most common question I hear from RVers, especially newbies, is what can I run on solar? And the answer is simple. Nothing. Nothing runs on solar. Solar simply recharges your batteries. Everything else runs on battery. If you look at the graphic on the screen right now, you'll see sun coming down, hitting the solar panel, going through the wiring, and into your batteries, and then the batteries power the rig. That's the most simple explanation. And the same would work for solar panels on your roof. Another way to think of a solar system is to compare it to a rainwater collection system. Rainwater would come on the roof, go through a gutter system, and refill a collection tank for use later. Solar systems do a very similar thing with energy. Solar energy comes in, is collected via the solar panels, and put into the battery, and fills up the battery, and stores it for use later to power your RV. Another question is, can I use the inverter? Absolutely. The inverter really has nothing to do with solar. The inverter uses the battery's energy to power certain outlets in your trailer. In other words, the inverter uses battery energy to power your outlets, therefore giving you access to use things that you typically plug in, like charging a laptop, or a TV, or a DVD player, or a coffee pot, or a hair dryer, things of that nature. And it works well until your batteries run down. Just keep in mind that anytime you have the inverter turned on and you're plugging things in, Often those devices are power hungry and they will drain your battery quicker than the standard DC things in your trailer would. Therefore, it's recommended that when you're not using the inverter outlets to charge something or plug something in, to turn the inverter off when not in use. If you would like more details about your inverter and how that process works, Air Gear wrote a wonderful blog that you can find at the link right here. What size solar panel should I get? This is a very hard question to answer unless you know what you use it for. Typically, most people never need more than a 200 watt system. Many of your newer Airstreams come with a two or 300 watt solar system installed if you get the solar package. And many of your portable panels that you can purchase are 100 watt panels, and a couple of those are typically good for anyone who's out there camping. There are many factors that affect solar and the size panel you get. If it's slightly cloudy or the time of year and the sun's low in the horizon, uh, if your solar panels are dirty, the curve of the Airstream roof is a big factor. So, uh, for example, right now the sun is pointing on this side, so it's getting these two panels good, but the, side, the other panels on the other side aren't getting very much sun right now. And you're limited, if you're going to put solar on the roof of the Airstream, you're always limited by real estate up there. There's not very much space to do much on most rigs. One more point on the size of solar panel that you might need. Airgear recommends that you use a minimum of 120 watts on any solar panel system. Next question that we get often is, should I get a should I get solar or a generator or both? And it really depends on how you camp or travel. If you are someone who camps in a power hungry environment and you like to use your coffee pots and your air condition and your charging laptops and running TV and video equipment all the time and DVD players and all that kind of stuff, um, you might consider a generator. If you're someone who likes to go off grid and just use the basic necessities, then solar and a basic inverter are probably plenty for you. Solar has big advantages, meaning it's free. The sun is free. It's always quiet. The solar system is never going to be allowed like a generator is. It can extend your off-grid camping time, and you don't have to fill up your tow vehicle with a generator and carry gas cans and all those type things. Another question we get often is, should I increase the solar wattage on my roof? And it really depends on you. Do you have real estate? One, uh, is it cost effective? Two, a very easy, simple answer to that is get a portable panel. You can always point at the sun no matter what time of year. You can park your rig under the shade and run the panel out in the sun. They're lightweight. They fit in many spaces in your trailer or in your tow vehicle. And you don't have to mess with the roof and worry about leaks on the roof. And you don't have to worry about 
wiring the trailer and all that kind of stuff. It's a very, very simple setup. Many people want to know exactly how much power their solar panels are generating, but don't understand the volts and the amp hours and things like that that come on the MPPT. That's typically installed with a solar package on an Airstream. Many people opt out to get a, a secondary device like the, the Victron Smart Shunt or the Xantrax Link Series or the Bogart trimetric engineering setup. There's a myriad of things out there that you can install on your trailer that gives you a better sense of what the power consumption is and the power coming in is. If you are less concerned with the numbers, you can easily get by with what's already installed on your Airstream. Your battery voltage meter on the sea level gauge or the battery voltage meter on the MPPT controller. They are not always terribly accurate, but they're pretty close. Last question is, do I need to upgrade my batteries? I know this is not a battery video here, but maybe, or maybe not. There are th really three primary reasons to replace the battery in your Airstream is one, it's not taking a charge anymore. Two, if you're gonna install a solar panel or solar package that is more than 200 watts, and the reason I say that is because 200 watts of power coming in on the sun may be more power than you can store with your current batteries. And three, you would like to switch to AGM absorbent glass mat or lithium batteries for more capacity and longer trips off grid. Just some final parting shots here. In North America, meaning in the continental 48, lower 48 states, you get on average four hours of usable sunlight throughout the year, no matter where you are. Obviously, higher latitude, less sun, lower latitude, more sun, wintertime, less sun, summertime, more sun, but in four hours on average is what you get usable energy per day. One quick solar item on Airstream specifically is the new models and their solar options. The new Tradewind comes with a 600 watt flexible panels on the roof. Every other 23 and larger trailer, if you get the solar package, comes with a 300 watt panels on the roof. The 16 to 22 foot, they have 100 to 200 watt options. Your base camp models can come with anywhere between 200 and 360 watts on the roof, depending on which model you get and the package you get. All of your driving models are somewhere between 200 and 400, depending on the model and the size. And the larger ones, 100 of that 400 is dedicated to just the coach battery and everything else is house battery. Regardless of the model you get, regardless if you get the solar package or not, every Airstream built in the last number of years is already prepped for solar, meaning it has the ports on the roof and the wiring comes down where you can hook in a solar controller and do all those things, should you desire to do so in the future. I hope this video clarifies some of the things about solar that you didn't understand previously. Thank you very much for allowing us to be a part of your day. Happy adventures, everyone.